Welcome to another lesson uh, in such a classes today. My name is uh, Mr. Castrillon and today we're going to do a little bit of revision and a little bit of learning on numbers and particularly how to say our age in Spanish. This is meant to be a key stage three uh, lesson, but uh, it's really good to kind of practice uh, a little bit uh, numbers and also the structure of the verb that is very important in Spanish and that you're going to be having to use it a lot in, in Spanish. So let's start with our lesson today. So the title of the lesson today is Tengo Once Años. So we're going to be learning that. We are going to be uh, doing a lot of work uh, that has to do with um, that verb particularly. Okay, so just... Uh, Tengo 11 años. So what are we going to learn today? Well, we're going to revise numbers from 10 to 20. We're going to learn how to give our age in Spanish and we're going to practice tengo, tiene, tienes and tienen. All these four words are very important to us in Spanish and they will have to, they will be very common to you and you will have to be very proficient and familiar with these words uh, in, in Spanish. En español, Hoy vamos a repasar los números del 10 al 20. Vamos a aprender a dar nuestra edad en español y vamos a practicar I am and he is, she is, you are, they are. Good. So let's start with our lesson. So we all know our numbers from 1 to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Remember that the pronunciation of the Z and C in Spanish, particularly when it's C I or C E, will vary slightly uh, from one country to another. So, for example, uh, in South America, cinco is going to sound cinco as I'm doing it now, but in Spain, it's going to be more like cinco. So, Always be aware that the pronunciation is going to change slightly. It's not going to be uh, massive, but there is a bit of a difference there. Now, what happens with all the numbers? Like these ones, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, and all the way up to 20. Well, we have the first five after 10. So the pronunciation is like this. 11, 12, 13. 14, 15. I want you to notice the end of each one of those. The last two letters are always CE. So if you are able to remember the first two, everything is going to be much easier. So for instance, for 11, just remember that is one CE. It's a C in the middle. Or if you want to remember it in a different way, you can remember once and then you need to remember it again. Just remember it once. And remember that the pronunciation is 11, 12 or 12, 13 or 13, 14 or 14, 15 or 15. But what happens with the next four, 16, 17, 18 and 19? Well, there is something really interesting that we do in Spanish, right? We actually say 10 and the number. We say 10 and 6, 10 and 7, 10 and 8 or 10 and 9 which is very simple for you to remember, for everyone to remember. That said, we do um, apply a, a slight change to the spelling when we write it down, but the pronunciation is gonna be exactly the same. So it's basically because we say the word very fast. So for example, diez y seis will be diez y seis. Diez y siete will be diez y siete. Diez y ocho will become 18, uh, 19 will become 19. Now, from then onwards, we have the word for 20, which is 20. Now, I want you to be very aware that these numbers requ require a lot of practice on your part. Why? Because we do this combination here of IE or EI. So my suggestion for you is always practice the sound first before tr before trying the actual long word. For example, e e e e e e, and then you'll be able to do die die die, and the same here a 
a, a. Because these words with so many vowels, like I and E, tend to be very confusing for us in English. And we don't want that. We want to pronounce these words really well. And my suggestion is always do it slowly. And then you can actually increase the speed of your pronunciation. So for example, you can say dieciséis until your brain gets really familiar with the pronunciation of the word. So let's try a little bit. How do you say? Como se dice? One. Uno. Five. Cinco. Eleven. Once. Twelve. Veinte. Oh, sorry, that's veinte there. <laughs> Sixteen. Dieciséis. Tres. Fourteen will be catorce. Two. Dos. Seventeen. Diecisiete. Long words. Good one. Eight. Ocho. Easy to remember. Nineteen. Diecinueve. Twenty. Veinte. Fifteen. Quince. Thirteen. Trece. Six. Seis. Seven. Siete. Nine. Nueve. Ten. Diez. Eighteen. Dieciocho. Four. Cuatro. Perfect. But what about numbers greater than 20? Well, we do have our numbers greater than 20, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So in this case, always try to revise these ones, play um, a memory game, hangman, so you can remember the spelling of the words. Uh, and also pronounce, uh, learn to, or practice your pronunciation of words like 40, 50, because they do have this combination of vowels. But practice makes perfect. And all you need to do, once you have these words in your brain and you remember, remember them really well, you add E, which means and. So we actually say the number plus whatever combination we want. So for instance, if you want to say uh, 21, in Spanish, you are saying 20 and 1, 21, 45, 63, 74, 49, 98. Now, can you actually remember the numbers I've said in Spanish? Well, remember that you can actually visit these videos, you can go on back and check them and you can actually uh, practice again and listen to them and try to write them down. So in Spanish we have this word tengo and this is a very good way to remember tengo and that was us saying I am or I have and we'll go to that in a minute. But in this case when we're talking about age we have tengo once años. I am 11 years old. Now that is when I'm ex talking about my own age, but of course, I will want to talk about other people's ages and I want to say their ages to other people. So for instance, mi amiga Lucy tiene 12 años. Now, could you translate that? Yeah, try and translate that sentence whilst I'm actually repeating the sentence for you. Mi amiga Lucy tiene 12 años. As you can see, the word changes slightly. And that's because tengo is a, is a word, is a verb that will change every time we use it. It's not a big change, but there's a small change there. Mis gatos tienen cinco años. Now, can you guess what animal is that? 
Mis gatos tienen cinco años. And how old they are? ¿Cuántos años tienes tú? Oh, now this is a very good one. And my suggestion is that whenever you're talking to your teacher and you're doing a test and you're talking about, you know, your own, uh, your personal information, like your name and your birth date and uh, the name of your parents, just for the exam, where that you can actually ask questions. And that's really good. We like you when you ask questions to us, like this one, for instance. ¿Cuántos años tienes tú? And also, I've put here in purple, casual. It means that you're talking to a person, but there is no, I would say, a, a very strong uh, formality between both of yours. It's like when you're talking to your friends. But if you want to be polite, which is very important as well, then all you need to do is change your tienes to tiene. So that's pronounced, ¿cuántos años tiene usted? Or ¿cuántos años tienes tú? Now, I put this in brackets because you actually don't need to use those words. You could easily say, ¿cuántos años tienes? Or ¿cuántos años tiene? And we in Spanish understand what you mean because the way how the verb works in Spanish makes it easy for us to understand what you mean. Now, this is a very uh, have or to have is, a, is an amazing verb because we use it a lot and it belongs to one of the a group to, uh, it belongs to a group of verbs that we use a lot and that are, are really, really amazing. Now, to have is tener, I have, tengo, but why is tengo, I am? Well, because in Spanish, we have our age rather than to rather than be old. And that's really important. Okay, so always remember that when you are actually talking about um, your age, you're actually using tener. You're literally saying, I have five years. And although it sounds very strange, it is the right, the right, the right way of doing it in uh, Spanish. Now, I've got some sentences here. Red is easy, green is hard. So let's see where you can actually translate some of these words into, or these sentences into Spanish. I am 12 years old. How old are you? We want it to be casual. You're talking to a friend or a relative. Uh, my dog is three years old. Can you remember how to say dog in Spanish? If you do, very well done. If you don't, just take your dictionary and work it out, and find it out. Then we have Lucy, my sister is 15 years old. My twin brothers are 20. And how old is your sister? Well, that's a really good one, actually. But the second one here, twin brothers, oh, that's a good one to use. How old are your parents? I'm not 12 years. I'm not 13 years old yet. So this is really important because this is a more difficult sentence that you can actually use for your exams. And they actually help a lot when you're actually getting lots of marks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you about 15 minutes for you to, sorry, about one minute, uh, just for you to try and translate as many sentences as you can. Off you go. Well, time is up. How many sentences were you able to translate into Spanish? I hope you've done most of them, if not all of them. Now, some of those ones, particularly the last three, are particularly difficult, but it's only because we need the language or the vocabulary that we are learning. And that's really important. Always remember, you are learning. And when you learn, you will find lots of 
interesting and difficult or challenging things to discover. Right, now let's see what the translation for these sentences are. I am 12 years old is tengo 12 años. How old are you, casual, would be cuantos años tienes? Now I want you to notice this little symbol here, right? That symbol is when we open our question and we are writing it down. In English, we don't need it, but in Spanish, we tend to use it. It's really important when you're writing uh, a question in Spanish to include that symbol. Mi perro tiene tres años de edad. Now, the word for dog in Spanish is perro. Now, that double R is always that rrr sound. So remember to practice that sound because for many of us, it's not easy. And we have to actually practice a lot, perro. Mi perro tiene tres años. I put the, that in, the, in brackets because you can actually leave it out. You could easily say, mi perro tiene tres años. And we will understand that you're talking about your dog's age. Lucy, mi hermana, tiene 15 años. Now, hermana is sister. Can you remember how to say brother in Spanish? Every time you're talking about a word that has a gender, meaning it is either is feminine or masculine, always remember to actually include in your head, in your brain, the opposite to it. So for example, hermana, the opposite would be hermano with an O, masculine, feminine, or feminine, masculine. Mis hermanos gemelos tienen 20 años. The word gemelos in Spanish is the word that we use for twins. And it's good to have it there because you could use it when you're talking about other people and that will give you some extra points on your speaking exam. ¿Cuántos años tiene tu hermana? How old is your sister? ¿Cuántos años tienen tus padres? How old are your parents? No tengo 12 años. Now, have a look and check where that negative sentence or what the, where the negative word goes in the sentence. In this case, it goes at the very beginning. No tengo. Oh, no tengo 13 años todavía. Todavía, really important word to remember. And that's one of those words that we use a lot in Spanish. So always keep note of those words that are really important. So in conclusion, we use the verb to have to give our age in Spanish. So don't get confused or get too scared about the use of that word. We use it a lot, not only when we give our age, but when we are actually saying what we have, what we possess. So technically today, you're actually learning a word, a verb or a word that will give you a lot of extra help when you're talking in Spanish. Numbers after 15 in Spanish will be linked by the word and. So 21 will be 20 and one or 32 is 30 and two, or 59 is 50 and nine. And always try to translate in your head the numbers that I'm saying, 60 and four. How do you say that in Spanish? Or how do you say 15? Or how do you say 16? 10 and six, remember that one. Remember that we have a casual form and a polite form with, with, when talking to somebody else or someone else. This is really important because we use it a lot in Spanish. We are very polite, or very casual, depending on the type of people we are talking to. For instance, when I speak to my mom in Colombia, I'm always using the polite way. Why? Because I feel more comfortable. Whereas when I'm talking to my brother, for instance, I usually use the casual form of the verb. Don't worry about that, about this yet, but just remember that we have it. And in time, you're going to be able to master that change of casual polite. And that's going to be really, really awesome. So today, very well done. You should be able to say the numbers up to 20. You should be able to give your age in Spanish and you should be able to use the conjugation of tener in present tense when referring to age. I hope you've had a good learning session today and just remember to come back to the video, check it out and always practice because practice is really important, particularly when you're pronouncing new words. The more practice you make, the better you're gonna be coming at Spanish. It's the way I did it with English. So I hope I can see you soon and have a lovely rest of the week. See you later, bye.